Hi! <laughs> so we're nearing the end of 2019 and a lot of people are doing reflecting and talking about where they've grown and come from in the last 10 years. So I thought I would do the same only in video form because that's what YouTubers do, right? They do everything in videos. Mostly because I haven't done a video where I sit down and just talk. Uh, I mean, I have. You're never gonna see them because I didn't like them and I'm gonna force myself to upload this even if editing it is a bit of a chore. <laughs> But like I said, so I've never made a video where I sit down and just talk, but I've also never properly introduced myself on this channel and I have a decent amount of videos now and I'm kind of uploading them a little bit more regularly. So, hi, my name is Cassie. <laughs> I'm an artist, I'm hard of hearing. I'm doing the YouTube thing now, I guess, or trying to, I mean, chances of this taking off are very, very slim. <laughs> So let's see, in 2009 I was 16 years old and at that time my life completely fell apart. <laughs> and then it proceeded to fall apart about, for about like three to four years. <laughs> it was a lot, it was a lot, and I'm not gonna get into too many details because they're not cute. By the way, if you hear any background noises, that's the washer and dryer. It's like right over here. My, my room is weird. Like I said, I'm not going to get into too many details about it because it's all very, very personal and sad. But my parents basically split up in 2009 and I pretty much fell into a really bad hole of anger, depression, suicide, manipulation, abuse. It just really wasn't a good time. I was also homeless for a little bit and I wasn't eating because I didn't have access to food and I'm already a very small lady. So you can imagine not eating regularly made me a lot smaller. I, I was not in a good spot at all. In 2012, I moved back in with my mom and basically started to try and haphazardly sew my life back together. And I spent about a year, year and a half, two years healing mostly uh, from all the trauma that I had gone through in the past couple years. And I say I spent that time healing, I'm still healing. Like it's gonna, it's a lifelong process, um, healing from trauma. But that first year, two years were pretty important. They were pretty substantial because I, all the wounds were still fresh and I had to basically relearn how to deal with normal life situations. To give you an example, I basically, if there was a problem that I had to face, if it was a very serious, serious problem, uh, I didn't really have much of a reaction. I usually handled it pr like pretty straightforward, like high stress situations I was a little too used to. Whereas if I spilled a glass of milk or if someone told me to do something that made me anxious, it was like a full blown like anxiety attack, sobbing and stress like, it was, it was bad. <laughs> and I basically had to relearn how to deal with normal life situations and get myself back to a normal mental area. I also ended up getting a job my first year when I uh, got out of my terrible situation. And it was my day job, I still have it, don't care for it, because really who likes their day job? Um, but it helped me get normalcy. I, you know, I fell into a routine, it was good even though i don't like my job it's good in the sense that it keeps me distracted jobs are good in that way you know especially if you've gone through a lot of trauma or you have mental health problems or any kind of like thing like that where your brain is always loud having a kind of a just normal day job is good in that it distracts you for a while like you're not always in your head and that at least for me that's how it it, it was really good i didn't know it too much when i first started because i was constantly freaking out about everything <laughs> But it did help me in the long run and it also got gave me money and I I like money. After about that first year or two of getting readjusted to normal life, I started drawing again. I've always drawn. I've always been an artist. That's the thing that's been the most consistent about me throughout my life. But when I was in those unfortunate situations over those last few years, I fell out of it. If I did draw, it wasn't that much. Um, it was just, it was just too much. And so I fell back into it, which was really hard actually when I started drawing again, because I felt stunted. You know, I hadn't drawn for so long and because of all the things I was dealing with that when I got back into it, I wasn't happy with the stuff that I was making because I felt like I should be better. But you know how it is, I swallowed my pride and like kept working at it and then I finally started getting better a lot faster and you know, it's artists like that sometimes you just need to keep working at it to get better and that sucks, I just want to be good. 
So because I was dealing with so much insanity at the time, I didn't get to go to college straight out of high school like a lot of people typically do. I actually didn't get to go to college until I was 23 years old. Mostly because the thought of being stuck in my day job for the rest of my life was an actual nightmare. So once I started getting thoughts like that, I was like, I need to, I need to do something else that is not my job because this is not what I want to be doing. <laughs> College is a real good place to like feel like you're achieving something, even if you don't know what you're achieving. But I knew what I was achieving. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an artist, so that's what I was in school for. It's what I'm still in school for. It took me a long time to go back to school though, at least longer than I wanted to, because when I actually first moved back, back in with my mom, she gave me the choice of going to school or going to work. And I chose work because I needed money and work experience anyway. And I knew at the time my mental space was not going to cut it for school. I wouldn't have been able to handle it. And by the time I was 23, I knew I was healthy enough to be able to be in that kind of situation. And you know, in reality, 23 really isn't that old. <laughs> it's not. It's not, <laughs> but it really feels that way, especially when society tells us, oh, you have to go to college right after high school, otherwise you're a mess. But, uh, you know, I, I was just like that, that anxiety of being stuck in my day job. I was just like, I, I need to go, I need to be in school. <laughs> and like I said, in reality, it's not that old, but it really feels that old, especially when you're surrounded by a bunch of 18 year olds and you're stuck doing group projects with said 18 year olds and none of them know how to time manage, so you're left being in charge with everything. It's not fun. Now, on one hand, going back to school at a later time in frame was a good thing because like I said, I was able to have healed a lot more uh, compared to where I was way before uh, when I went back home, I think at about like, just before I turned 19, so I think it was still 18 at the time, you know, I was able to handle the stress and responsibility of school and I wouldn't have been able to do that before. But also because by the time you reach your 20s, you kind of have a decent idea of who you are, what you're capable of doing and what you want to do, uh, much better than, um, when you're fresh out of high school. And that that varies. I'm unique in the sense in the sense that I'm one of those people that has always known what they've wanted to do with their life. I've always wanted to be an artist. There was never any if, ands, or buts about it. I've had other interests and stuff that I thought about pursuing outside of art, but it was just, I wanted to draw. <laughs> I like drawing, I like art, I like creating things. Um, whereas there are people like my younger sister who's kind of bounced back and forth her entire life. Uh, going from one thing to another, trying to decide what she wants to do. And that's completely fine. Everyone's different. Everyone has their own journey. But that's why I think that sometimes going to school a little later, um, when you kind of know who you are a little bit more, is good. Which is just my long-winded way of saying if you want to go back to school when you're in your 20s, do it. Because at that point, you, you're you determined. You know what you want to do. You're not young and you're like, I don't know. <laughs> On the other hand, I do still have the crippling fear and anxiety of I'm so far behind everyone in the race to success. And it's worse when people my age already are in careers that I want, that I'm striving for, that I'm in school for. And that's very disheartening and it's just a symptom, honestly. It's something that you just kind of have to deal with, unfortunately. Um, I'm still working through those feelings every day. Sometimes I feel better about it. Sometimes I don't feel so good about it. When I look at the big picture over the last 10 years of my life, it's like I don't really feel like I achieved that much, I suppose, when in reality I achieved a lot. You know, I achieved more in the sense of personal growth and healing and stuff like that. Which honestly is almost harder to do than trying to get a job in your field of study because it's a ongoing process. I'm never going to be able to stop healing and growing. I mean, as a human being, we're all like that, but just all the trauma that I've gone through, you know, that's always gonna be there. I'm always gonna have to deal with that and take responsibility for it. And honestly, <laughs> despite all the bad stuff that I mentioned, albeit in not as much detail, <laughs> A lot of good happened to me in 10 years when I really like look down at the details of everything that's happened. Like, yeah, there was a lot of bad stuff, but that was like so early on and it was only for a certain amount of time. Whereas the rest of it, I had a lot of better things going on. Like uh, actually in 2009, the year my life fell apart, I met my best friend who I'm still with today. And honestly, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here today because she pretty much is the reason why I stayed alive. After the healing, after like, I think it was about a year or two after I started healing that I met my other best friend who basically helped me heal even more, gave me the tools I needed 
to do better and learn better and just get better at dealing with my <laughs> feelings instead of dealing with them every single moment that I had them. <laughs> I got a job, I went back to school, I made a ton of new friends, I've worked hard on my art, and this year I finally started making YouTube videos, which is something I kind of always wanted to do just for funsies. I've always liked the idea of creating something and you know, I've always liked movies and TV shows and stuff, so the YouTube thing was always just kind of a neat little amateur way of playing with that idea of it. And it's been fun. I really like making my art videos and stuff, and vlog videos are a lot of fun too. <laughs> the sit down videos are the ones I have the most trouble with because it's just me <laughs> and that's uncomfortable. My family relations are also a lot stronger than they've ever been in my entire life. I had a lot of family troubles growing up, you know. Um, my mom and I weren't as close, well, we were close, but it, we had a very rough relationship throughout my development years. And honestly, after all the trauma and stuff that I went through, we came out really, really strong and really close. And I wouldn't, I don't know what I would do without my mom. Like these last 10 years, they've been fun. They've been entertaining. You know, I did a lot of cosplays. Oh yeah, I don't think I mentioned I'm a cosplayer too. What a shock. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, you know, my cosplays, I made a lot of costumes that I really enjoyed making. I got to cosplay Belle, which was a dream cosplay I wanted to do for a very long time. And I got to do her and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> but, and next semester will be my last semester at community college. And then I will be transferring over to a university where I'll be able to just full-time study the arts as opposed to like a lot of the academic GE general ed courses. And I'm so, so excited about it. Uh, mostly because, you know, I've been at community college for a little while longer than I think people typically are. Mostly because I kind of wanted to take my time and get reacquainted with school after not being there for so long. Because I was there for so long, uh, there came a point where I started to kind of feel, mostly in this past year, uh, where I was like, oh, I feel like I'm just slugging along. I feel like I'm never going to get out of community college. And I, I don't mind community college. It's a great, if you can go to community college, go to community college before you go to like university. It's so, so worth it. But um, there was that sense of like, I'm here for so long, you know, I want to go to university. I want to like just study my major. I don't want to study these other classes, even if I enjoy them. Um, but now I'm finally there and I'm feeling like really gunned for it. I'm so excited to be able to go and just like engulf myself in art and hopefully get better and hopefully see more improvement. But honestly, none of this would have happened if I had given up all those years ago. I also got a puppy this year. Her name is Oakley and she's a little monster. Oakley, come here. She's a little monster. She's so cute. She's a baby. She's only nine months. Okay, you can go back to napping now. I hope 2020 will bring me good things. <laughs> you know, I want to get better in my art journey. I want to get better at making YouTube videos. I want to have good times with my friends and my family. I want to make good memories. I want to go to school. I want to learn how to drive. Yes, I don't know how to drive. I'm 26 and I don't know how to drive. I know, I have anxiety. I'm working on it. If you take anything from this video, it's this. Like I said before, it can be very easy to get lost and not see all the things that you've achieved in the last 10 years. And it certainly can feel like you haven't achieved anything in the last 10 years. It certainly feels that way for me. That's more especially if you look at the big picture. When you really look down into the details, you'll find that you've probably achieved more than you realize. I feel like I didn't achieve nearly as much as I wanted to because there were certain goals that I wanted to achieve and I couldn't do them. But why couldn't I do them? I because I wasn't in the right space for it. I had to achieve more healing and personal growth and get myself to a place mentally so that I can achieve the goals that I want to. And I'm finally in a place where I'm able to do that. Like several years ago, I wouldn't have been able to film a YouTube video or even consider it because I was just so like blah in my head. That's a medical term, by the way, blah. <laughs> I had to focus on any, everything else to get me to a point where I can finally start pursuing these things that I want to pursue. Like there's absolutely no way I would have been a professional artist or like I said, doing these YouTube videos in my early 20s, I probably would have like cried the entire time. And that's usually what happened if someone like disciplined me even slightly, I immediately started crying because I couldn't handle people like getting on my case about anything. It was so bad. <laughs> I had to grow, like I said a million times in this video, the 2010s were all about personal growth and I'm gonna keep growing because that's how human beings are and we should always strive to keep growing and getting better. And if I'm not, if I stop growing in the 2020s, well, find me floating in a pool, face down, despairing about the disillusionment of the American dream. Anyway, thank you for watching. <laughs> if you enjoyed it, 
cool. I mean, I'm glad my rambling video was something that you found interesting. If you didn't, oh well, it's cool too, man. Um, what do YouTubers do? They say thumbs up and subscribe, right? You you like this? You like this stuff? <laughs> I'm gonna make more art videos. I have actually a lot of sketches and stuff uh, that I have uh, done. Some are still in progress and I plan on doing a lot more painting for them for the YouTubes. <laughs> and hopefully I'll have those up pretty soon. Um, the holidays are kind of crazy, but I'm not in school currently because of break. So I'm hoping I can get some stuff done like that. I have a lot of stuff that I'm hoping to achieve in 2020, actually. I uh, plan on opening up an Etsy store, which I will announce at a point when I finally have things up up and ready, basically, uh, to be bought. So hopefully people will enjoy that. I really hope so. And it's gonna be only a few items, you know, gonna kind of swiggle my way in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm really excited about that, you know, selling stuff and being a real artist, I guess. <laughs> Either way, I have a lot of stuff that I want to achieve next year, and I'm really hoping that I'm able to do it. And I hope uh, you guys enjoy it. If you want to stick around and watch me try my best, subscribe! Uh. Oakley wants you to subscribe. Subscribe for Oakley. So cute. You smell good. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. It'd be very easy not to see. Uh, uh.